So, so far, we have been working on this store sales bar chart Java. And this store sales Java code class has already been able to provide us with a class definition, a constructor, and uh, a utility function where you can get daily sales. You can set a store up and create a daily sales. Now, one thing we want to see is how we can utilize this code as if it's, de it, as if it's developed by someone else. And uh, I'm looking, now I'm looking at and try to use it. So, Let's say I am a developer from Joe's Pizza Store, and I want to utilize this code, this uh, Java, instead of writing my own add cells and uh, objects, I'm creating a separate class. In the main method, I'm going to generate seven instances representing seven days. Then within each day, I'm going to use the set daily sales method to generate one instance and populate the sales data, then print out the day sale. And sales name should come from user input. Once all seven objects are created, print out the bar chart for seven days. So let's say I am creating a new class. And uh, what is the name? Joe Pizza Shop. And I'm, uh, I'm actually right here. I'm checking this. So it will automatically generating public static void main for me. I didn't check this by default before because I want to make sure you understand how this main is written. But now that uh, you have been going through several sessions, you should be able to write down this without any issue. So now I'm going to shift some work to Eclipse. Okay, and now let's add Java doc and Java doc. And here I'm adding this Now, how are you going to utilize this bar chart, this bar chart Java? The right way is whoever developed this should write a detailed doc, just like what you see when you use this, um, when you use this string methods, right? Sub, uh, substring, you should have similar things uh, created. Now, what I'm going to write here is to, Create. Uh, how about I uh, create a an instance of then populate with ten random cells between one no, ten to fifty. Return the instance of sales chart. Oops. Okay, now, what if I want to use this method? Remember this method is a static method. Uh, so the way you call it, is by putting a dot between class name and sets daily sales. And uh, sales name, so let's just um, create a string of the sales uh, store name first. Store name. And now let's go back to our original assignment. And uh, actually, I don't think I need to because I'm just going to get here main method. Oh, I do need to. I do need to get a Joe's Pizza store. And get some, how you get a keyboard. So I'm going to start with uh, getting a keyboard. Then I'm going to get a keyboard store name equals to 
or sales name, store name we know, but we can put this as a sales name. What's the sale? What's the name of the sales? Maybe it's a Monday sales. Uh, the keyboard dot. Uh, not get next. Next line. This is is a next line, which gives us the sales name. Am I making a mistake? Why there is a, a sales name? Oh, okay. Because I need to define this as a sales name, so we will first generate a sales, and then this will be called BC one equals two, or sales one. How about we call it sales one? And because the daily sales is of type store sales bar chart, this is exactly what we need to do. That's how we get the um, first sales. Then sales one must to, then we will generate seven right oops what am i doing i think i got confused myself as i talked about this so that's why you can see you do need some pseudo code i'm trying to write without pseudo code and I get confused myself but basically what's go what i'm trying to do now that i have a clearer mind i can do it but for you when you write your code it's better to write pseudo code first what i'm trying to do here is generating seven cells three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to change the name. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now I have all seven cells, right? I think it's better if I type in some information, some note system out the print line. Please enter the name of first sales. Uh, second sales. Third sales. The four sales. The fifth cells, the sixth cells, and the seven cells. Now that you have seven cells, uh, so th missing th, you are going to create a uh, print out its bar chart. So how did we do that? We do it by print out. This will be sales one. And of course, we also need to have uh, some note, note, note. Maybe we will print out an empty line first to separate our input from output. And then we will print out like the sales bar chart looks like and I think on also here, which reminds me, this should not be print line, it should be print. So that uh, we will place our input and uh, this prompts on the same line. And here is sales one. Then we will print out all seven cells, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let's run. The first name is Mon uh, how about we start at Sunday? 
The second name is Monday and followed by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now you can see that's the sales bar chart, right? Exactly as each time we enter a sales name, then we get a series of general, uh, cashier input. So if you think how this program works, it's actually just like one complete accounting system where you type in a category, then you will manually input all these data and uh, make a sum of this category. Then you do category by category until you, you achieve a certain amount certain number of category, then you will print out the sales. It can either be a daily sales to comparison, or it can be store by store, Pennsylvania versus uh, New York, or Philadelphia versus New York, or versus Boston, right? This is a common usage that you will use for accounting software that you, accounting library. And what did you do in the Joe's Pizza Shop? You are not writing any code of your own uh, to do all the add up. All the, you are not doing anything to perform all the instance creation or they, the random number generation or addition. You are not doing anything to generate a char string, a bar char string. All you are doing is you are in, you are referencing a class so that someone else created and utilize the code that someone else put there. And when I move my mouse here, you can see that this is exactly the comments you wrote or we wrote in the Java doc document. It create an instance with 10 random number cells between 10 to 50. It's a parameter and uh, it returns an instance with the cells. So this is how you can create a, inst a library, a class library and help people to use it. You create your library, you write your Java doc comments so that people can use it, you expose it to other people and then they can reference your class. If uh, your class comes in another package, they will add some import just like the Java scanner import. And here you are actually generating random numbers, but the, your code here is not referencing random, um, random object because all this has to be packaged and encapsulate, encapsulated by the developer of this store sales bar chart. And basically this is how you, uh, uh, why object oriented programming is so powerful that you can utilize someone else's object based on the, the behavior they, de they describe in the Java doc comments. And you don't need to worry about the execution details. You don't need to know what is inside 